Hello, hi Rajiv ji. This is uh, Kamal here from Mirasangeet.com uh, and a warm welcome to you on our show Chat in Chai today. Dhanyavad uh, Kamal ji, Pranam. Pranam Rajiv ji, kaise hai aap? I'm very well. How are you? Very well, thank you Rajiv ji. Uh, so Rajiv ji, we've got some queries here on uh, Mirasangeet from our listeners. Sure. If Before we start that, I want to quickly put in a word about immigration reform. Certainly, uh, yes. As you know, the government had closed down because of um, a disagreement between the two parties on mm -hmm. what our budget, etc., should look like. Uh, it has; they have reached a temporary agreement, good till the middle of January, uh, and sort of February for some things. Uh, and the president has said that he wants to now push immigration reform. So, uh, what remains to be seen is with this budget fight how many people have become um, more inimical or, or have more animosity towards each other and if we can mm -hmm. reach some agreement. But it, next week or two should be very interesting for immigration law. All right, okay. So we do hope to see some positive changes there. Keeping our fingers crossed. Please go ahead with your questions. <laughs> yes, Rajivji. The first one here is from a listener. He says, I have an immigration-related question uh, for your Monday Chat and Chai show with Attorney Rajiv Khanna, would you please uh, um, get them answered? The question is, I was on H-1B visa earlier. I have a green card now through my wife's EB-1 employment category. Currently, she is back home in India and we are working on our divorce proceedings. I wanted to know its impact on my immigration status. Before uh, you would like to answer, Rajivji, He's also sent in a little bit more about uh, himself here. I thought we had answered this question a week or so ago. Um, uh, or, or, no, we couldn't take it up, Rajivji, yes. Or maybe maybe it was on our website on immigration.com. Uh, so no, I sent, sent it to you and uh, we sent him an online, uh, you know, we were waiting for... Oh, I see. Uh, okay, okay. To go on. Yes, now yes. I remember. We exchanged some emails over this. Uh, yes, can yes. you Can you tell me when was his green card approved? Well, he sent a little bit about himself here. He says, we got married in March 2008. Green cards were filed in January 2012, approved in December 2012. We made a mutual decision to spend time to know ourselves better and she left for India in August 2013. We've not yet started the divorce proceedings as there is a chance we might get together, but our value systems are different and there was not any joy in the relationship, communication, respect, and joy were missing, and we felt it's high time to work out on ourselves. Uh, so uh, anyway... Uh, I, I don't, I don't uh, an yeah. anticipate any problem for his green mm -hmm. card in this process. Mm -hmm. Okay? So even if okay. they do get divorced, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Okay, okay. Uh, now, there's another question here, Rajuji on Mira Sangeet. It says, my mother is currently in the United States. She entered based on the immigration visa on her passport and gave the sealed packet at the port of entry. We went to the SSN office, but were told that we need to wait for the SSN to come. She wants to leave in the next few weeks. The question is, can she re-enter without a physical GC in hand? Number two, she was told it takes six to eight months to come at port of entry. How do we get her SSN? Is it mailed automatically? And what else should I be aware of before she leaves the United States? Before she leaves the U.S., if she does not have the physical green card, she would have trouble re-entering. So it mm -hmm. is best to get a an InfoPass appointment, take an InfoPass appointment, and get her passport stamped. Um the USCIS will stamp the passport saying um, something like uh, processed for I-551, which is what green card is, processed for I-551, temporary proof of permanent residence, something like that, usually good for, I think, one or two years. That stamp is as good as having a physical green card. Now, I've, okay. heard, I've heard that USCIS has said that they will not issue this stamp uh, and they expect you to wait for the physical green card unless there is some urgency in your case. So be prepared for that. Before you go in, you may want to call USCIS customer service and see what they suggest. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Rajivji. Uh, hello? Uh, for the SSN, social security number, you do mm -hmm. have to apply. As far as I know, it's not automatic. You've got to apply for it. All right, okay. 
so moving on rajiv ji we've got another query here from a listener who says i've just got my citizenship citizenship and i wanted to bring my parents over to the united states they're currently in india um can you tell me the uh, can you tell me the procedure for them to enter the united states and enter as legal permanent residents um what you will do is you will use form i130 to apply for them i uh, want mm-hmm. there will be one form separate each for both parents uh read the instructions on five and uh, form i130 they are fairly self explanatory um okay and the way it works is once that form is approved you will then receive certain paperwork from national visa center in new hampshire you'll fill mm-hmm. that paperwork and you'll send it back to nvc nvc will then send certain papers or the file to um the us consul consulate closest to your your family in india's their home and eventually they'll be scheduled for a medical and an interview and they come uh, with a with a green card and what they come with is a, is a is an immigrant visa it's a, they're given a a sealed envelope that they deliver at the airport to the authorities uh, okay and basically that's how the green card process works some people apply for green card when the parents are already in the united states and then they stay mm-hmm. in the us until the green card is obtained uh, that becomes a little complicated because you should not have a preconceived intention of applying for a green card when you enter on a tourist visa otherwise um, uscis can consider that to be a a, a misrepresentation or a fraudulent use of the of the non immigrant visa which is a tourist visa okay all right so that's a pretty detailed answer you've given there rajiv ji i'm sure uh, all our listeners there who sent in their queries have got uh, their queries answered uh, and in case they have any issue they can certainly write back to us and of course all our other listeners as well tune in to mera sangeet can write in to us and uh, rajiv ji thank you so much for your time and for the detailed discussion that we've had today on immigration as well as the queries that you answered for our listeners always a pleasure ma'am thank you thank you rajiv ji have a good day ahead you too ma'am bye 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 every other thursday at 12:30 p.m. eastern standard time we host a um, free community conference calls everybody is welcome to join some people post questions ahead of time you can take membership in our forums uh, all of the details are there on our website immigration.com you can take membership uh, ahead of time and um, you know it's instantaneous it happens right away and post your questions beforehand or you can just log in uh the phone number in all are provided 202 800 8394 1230 eastern standard time every other thursday we have uh, free apps for both apple ios platform for your iphones and ipads as well as for android just look for immigration.com immigration.com the period dot and uh, the application should show up